Good morning. Welcome. If you are visiting with us for the first time today, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring you a gift. I'm Jennifer Khalil, the senior warden here at St. Ed's. The announcements are all children. Be sure to get your coloring sheets, colored pencils, from the ushers this morning and bring your artwork up during the offertory. These are the coloring sheets that was created for them. So please, um, ushers, please make sure they <coughs> have them. Thank you to everyone who showed up for our fourth fish fry on Friday. Also, a great big thank you to the many volunteers who have made this thing possible for us here at St. Ed's. Our fish fry is such an awesome thing. Everyone is enjoying it. Um, please note that we will not have fish fry this Friday, but we will resume on March 31st. Today we are having the laying of hands after service and anointing. If you would like to receive this blessing, please stay after church and come up to the altar for your blessing. The Lenten seasons series are continuing still. We, ha we are in the fourth week of Lenten series. Um, it's on Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. in the chapel, and on Wednesday evenings at 6.30 in Nicholson Hall, we have supper and we have discussions. It's been going very well. It's not too late to come and be aboard with it. Today we are celebrating the Celtic Eucharist and our guest musician is Brad Phillips. Welcome, Mr. Brad Phillips. <laughs> Don't forget to make your donations for Easter flowers. The forms are in the Nortex. Please fill out the forms and put it in the collection plate as you go along. And the last announcement I would like to make is that I'm asking and requesting that um, in the mornings when we arrive, we have some parishioners that like to come here into the sanctuary and be quiet and spend a moment with God. And sometimes it can be a little noisy. I know everybody's happy to see each other and we greet each other, but can we hold it down a little bit and um, be a little quiet? And also, when leaving the church after the service, um, because of the healing and laying of hands, sometimes we intend to hang around in the church and and you know, laugh and talk with each other, but um, if you could just be mindful. Thank you, and this is all that I have to announce this morning. Go out and spread the love, as Ted would say. Thank you.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Together, Almighty God, all our desires in the world, and for your no secret service, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and work to magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, O God, the Father Almighty. O Lord of all the world. O Creator of the elements, have mercy upon us, O Almighty God. O Holy Spirit, you rule all created things, visible and invisible. Have mercy on us. Almighty God, the Heavenly Father and the only begotten Son. Have mercy on us. O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Precious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that He may live in us and we in Him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. reading from the first book of Samuel, Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one who I named to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, do you come peaceably? He said, peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab 
and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called to Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of the Lord. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. to the Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. 
For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, wake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to John. As he walked along, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva, saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar, began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept 
he kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mark, spread it on my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes. Then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he doesn't observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews didn't believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked him, is this your son who you saw was born blind? How can he, how then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son, and he was born blind, but we do not know where it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I know, that so I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you wouldn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to be, to become his disciples? Then they revealed him saying, you are his disciples, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we, do not know where he comes from. The man answered, here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began, he, the world began, has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born blind entirely in sins.
And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may go and believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. And the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he, and he watched him. Jesus said, I came into the world for judgment. So for those who do not see may see. And those who do see may come blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have seen. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Be seated. Good morning. morning. With the music that is being played for us this morning, I feel like I am someplace like in Ireland. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Brad, for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, yesterday, I had a little bit, a couple of hours free in my afternoon, which is unusual. And we decided with my wife to go to downtown Lawrenceville, and they were celebrating some Patrick's Day. And let me tell you, a lot of people from Lawrence and Winnet, they know how to have fun <laughs> and how to drink green beer. <laughs> Sorry, we are in the pulpit and in church. So those who are celebrating St. Patrick's and all of this tradition, God bless, God bless all of you. Because God lives in all the cultures, which is great. So friends, as we hear in the gospel this morning, the readings are getting longer during this season of Lent. And as we, they grow longer means we are approaching our Holy Week. We are getting closer. We are running 
out of time. And I ask to invite you to try to answer what I have done during this Lenten season. I hope that all of us have taken this opportunity to renew our lives, our Christian lives in the Lord. My question for you this morning, after listening the Gospel of John, chapter 9, is how this lesson This story, a miracle story, a healing story, help us to see better. In what way help us to see better? In another way, how this story that is in the gospel help us to discern and to choose what is right. When I say to you, I hope that this reading helps us to see better, I'm, I'm not talking about glasses or eye contacts, but our spiritual sight. I want to invite St. Paul in the letter to the Ephesians to help us to discern what Jesus is trying to tell us with this, through this reading. And St. Paul in, to the Ephesians says, once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. I invite you to think about the times that we have been in darkness. When we have been afraid, without direction, when we don't know what is going on, what is happening, and what is next in our lives. Have you been there? When you don't have any answers, any words, and not even desire to pray. I have been there. I have been there. And I can, I can tell you many stories. When I was in my first years of seminary, and we were preparing for my youngest sister, the quinceañera party on January, Third, we were waiting for two brothers who were coming to the party, to the celebration, and my oldest brother arrived, and he was pale, and he said to me, Fabio, I have some bad news to tell you. What is it? My brother, who was driving to come to this celebration, had a car accident and died. That's what the stories I'm talking about. And since I was in the seminary, he said, I cannot tell my, my, par my parents about this. Can you do that? This was the first of my 11 siblings who died when he was 31 years old. I'm telling you because I invite you to think about those times when you, you are in that, you are blind, you, in darkness, you don't have any direction, you don't know what to do. And imagining somebody saying, like the gospel today, what did you do? Why these things happen to you, or things like that, or blame, trying to blame you. There is nothing to blame. It's life. Life is like that. But in those difficult moments, if we follow the gospel, 
is when we discover that faith is important. That faith is real. And that God is on our side, giving us, giving us a new vision. And saying something very deep in our souls, don't worry. At the end, everything is going to be fine. At the end of, the, of that night, it's going to be light. Believe me, trust. It's, it's beautiful how in those, in those dark moments, for some reason, is when we discover more and more the presence of God, the presence of Jesus. And that God who gives us perspective of life. For me, this is part of my ministry that I, say, I take it seriously. When I listen to a story of somebody, I said, don't focus on that particular issue. Think about your life, the meaning of your entire life. And as you today, perhaps you are going through a suffering and pain, believe that there is going to be a tomorrow and that it's going to change and it's going to be better. You have to believe. You have to trust. God is going through our lives as he was in that road and stops. I love when God stops. Not to judge, not to condemn, but to help. To empower. To say, now you can see. Allow me, allow me to help you to see. It's great when faith communities and believe this is a mission of us as a church is to help others, each other to discern, to discern what is next in our lives and to say, this is not the end. God is helping us. Today is important, it is important to understand that we as people who believe, people who said we have faith, we have a church, Our mission is not to say, my mission is to keep the traditions of the past. Just keeping the traditions of the past to not give us hope for the future. Our mission is to recognize that as the beggar, as the blind man, we are sent. We people are being sent to give hope, to communicate faith to others. And how we can do that? By perhaps recognizing that God always is in a mission of healing, reconciliation, a mission of love and compassion, a mission of empower, empowerment. God is always in the work of transforming people. But also to understand that as a community, as followers of Jesus, as people who are being sent, if we somebody who is innocent, is vulnerable because he's a child, because he's too young, because he's poor, because he's an immigrant. Our mission is not to take advantage of them. 
Our mission is to help, is to empower, is to protect, is to assist. So today, let us, from the bottom of our hearts, let us invite Jesus. I say, say Jesus, help me to see better. I want to see my family better, deeper, like in the first reading, not in the way they look like, but in their hearts. Huh? To see that inside of all of us, God dwells. That inside of all of us, there is a lot of love to share. Help me to create a, a vision, to offer that vision to the world, to build together a better world, to see others as our neighbors, our friends, of, of, uh, as a members of one great family. And as we said in our tradition, God come and in the power of the Holy Spirit, give us a new vision of your glory. Let us pray. Please, please say the words after me. Loving God, open our eyes to see your intimate presence in the world. We want to live in your light and share your life and light to those who cannot see. In Jesus Christ, the light of the world, we pray. Amen. God is the God of all humans. The same God of wholeness and grace, you have called us to make us children of light, that we might share in your work of reconciliation and healing. Hear our prayers on behalf of the whole creation, that your goodness and mercy may bring life and freedom to all, as we pray, O oh God, you are our shepherd we shall not be in want. Gracious and good God, 
open the eyes of your church and guide us with the vision of Christ, that we may work the works of God while it is day, bringing your light and hope into the world. O oh God, you are our shepherd. We shall not be in want. Wondrous one, anoint for us those whom you call to leadership, and let your divine spirit come mightily upon them, that all who hold power and authority in the world may take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but live as children of light. O oh God, you are our shepherd. Loving God, let your compassion reach out in mercy toward all who are oppressed by injustice, violence, poverty, economic distress, illness, or natural disaster throughout the world. May your goodness and mercy comfort and relieve them, and your strong rod and staff empower them. O oh God, you are our shepherd. Eternal wisdom, revive our souls and guide us along right pathways for the sake of your name as we seek to serve you among our neighbors in this community, that none may be scapegoated or blamed for our, our own blindness as we move from darkness to light, discovering the fruit of the Spirit in all that is good, right, and true. O oh God, you are our shepherd. You shall not be in want. Help us to find out what is pleasing to you as we offer to you our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, especially for those celebrating birthdays this week. Ralph Parks, Dominic Hernandez, Olive Joachim, Serene Harris, and Lakeisha Bui. O oh God, you are our shepherd. You shall not be in want. Let your works, O oh compassionate one, be revealed in those who suffer. Anoint their heads with oil and let their cups be filled and running over. We pray especially for Kathy Yukashigi, Diane, Jill, Rhonda Mona, Kathy Mormon, Maureen Pickett, Teresa Sermon, Kay Craig, Rain, Raven, Shandy, and Mark. Christine, Kathy, Raquel, Oh God, you are our shepherd. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for you are with us. We entrust to, you, to your shepherding arms those who have died. May they dwell in the house of God forever. O oh God, you are our shepherd. Gracious and loving God, open our eyes to see your infinite presence in the world about us, that we may awaken and live in your life, lay down in green pastures, and be led beside still waters. All for your love's sake, to Jesus Christ, your anointed, in the power of the Holy Spirit, for you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be all of us with you. And also with you.
Great. At this moment, I want to invite our senior warden to do a report of our activities that happened yesterday. Good morning again, here I am. Good morning. Amen, Lord. We had our vestry meeting yesterday. It was very interesting we, and very productive. We covered a lot of stuff on the vestry, um, at the vestry meeting. Father Fabio opened the mor with a morning prayer. Then he followed with the Episcopal Church Formation article. And the title on that was Vestry as a Life-Giving Team by Chris Holmes. There was great discussions on that. Um, it, it's highlighted team and group. Our discussion was that we are a group, not a group, but a team, and the vestry was very effective in mentioning what we thought about us, ourselves as, as a team. Father Fabio also explained what is expected of us and what we are trying to accomplish Chris Holm talked about four main things, about a, a life-giving vestry. One is to share leadership with the priests. Two, to align with the same goals. Three, our mission of the church is to be focused. And four, to work through the Holy Spirit and believe that what our vestry is about. I see that Father Fabio is trying for us to be this life-giving vestry. He also mentioned that he wants us to be a joyous vestry. If we are joyous, we will share and serve God, and we will have our mission and our purpose being our strength. Other matters was presented, Bill Passaway, was one of our presenters giving us an update on the financials report. And as it stands, we're we are looking okay right now until the third quarter when he will have a better picture of how we stand. And at that point, we will report it. Leslie Nystrom was also with us yesterday at the meeting. She did a presentation on end of life planning that she and Father Fabio has implemented this vision for, for us, and um, we are going over all the information that was given. The Vestor will look at it, and we will decide in details in approving. Um, the plan is that on April 30th, hopefully, we will have a reception between four and six at the church here, and we will be inviting a director from the funeral home who will come over and give us some details, answer questions for us, and anything that we may have in our planning. I know it's difficult sometimes for us to think of things like that, but it is essential and important for ourselves and our families. We had a third presentation. We had a busy meeting last, yesterday. We had a third presentation. We had Christina Mahoney, a social worker from Oakland Meadow School. She introduced Oakland Meadows to us. She gave, she gave an overview of all the programs that they offer. She spoke about the students who are very special in that school. They're medically fragile. The school has various programs that the church could partnership with. Again, the Vestra will look through all the details on that and we will get back. Father Fabio thanked her for her presentation and, and, and made her know that you know, we will assist in whatever way we can. We will look at it, and we will see how we can commune, commune with, with her and the school. If any of you have any questions about 
Oakland Meadow, you could also see Valerie Curry. She is helping us with that. Our junior warden reported on the plumbing at the, um, on the Croft that we're getting more estimates and hopefully it will be permanently fixed. Myself as senior warden went over the healing, you know, things that we have accomplished this month so far, the healing service, Lenten service. We had a great achievement last Sunday and I wanna say thank you to Hillary Marvell, and I will say the most of the congregation of the 1230 service, they helped us to clean up Nicholson Hall last Sunday. We were there till 430, and I know when you go over there, you will see that all the stuff that was all over the, 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 the hall was cleaned up and removed, and um, I want to say a big thank you. Hillary, you have been, uh, is he here today? Yes, you have been so helpful. Um, thank you. Okay, um, there was much discussed yesterday, but I'm just trying to brief a few of the things here. Um, I'm going to touch on the subject of Mother Karen right now. I know you are all waiting to hear. Mother Karen and Canon Alicia had a conversation on Tuesday. This is a two-part conversation. One was Tuesday. The next will be next Tuesday with Father Fabio, Mother Canon Alicia, and Mother Karen. It will be next Tuesday at 4.30. But so far, the meeting that we had last Tuesday, it's now official that Mother Karen has decided that she will not be returning to St. Edward's. She will pursue her attention as being chaplain at the Emory, um, Emory Hospital. The other half of the conversation will be in details on Tuesday the 21st with Father Fabio. And at that point, we will have more information. We will have the final, I should say, information and update on the arrangements that will be made. We want to wish Mother Karen all the best. I ask you to continue to pray for her as she, as she stays focused on God, on what he's leading her to do as a priest. We love her and we want nothing but the best for her. On the good news, Canon John is working on assigning someone else to St. Ed's to help Father Fabio. So that position will be filled and we're hoping that it will be filled shortly. Another sad news that I have for us here is that our administrative secretary, Sarah Russer, has resigned from her position yesterday. She has given us two weeks' notice. She has found a full-time position, but she will continue her plans in helping us with our special services through the Easter holidays. And she plans that if anything here at St. Edward's, she will help us with it. So we'll pray for Sarah and hope that God's love will continue to protect her. Let us continue our Lenten season remembering together that we are servants of God, that God works for the good in all things. Now at this point, I'm gonna ask Leanne, you wanted to say something, please, um, on the hunger walk. I forgot to have her do the announcement first, so do you mind? Go ahead, please, thank Good you. Good morning. Um, as you know, last Sunday, three, of, three adults and seven teenagers, we went down to um, downtown Atlanta and did the hunger walk. It was cold, it was wet, but we did it. <laughs> um, you ask the teenagers that you see, they took some really cool pictures of the clouds coming down on the skyscrapers. Um, we have raised $1,324 for hunger walk. 
to add to this, we will be having a spaghetti dinner on April 15th from 5.30 to 7.30. It's going to be $10 a plate, and that will include spaghetti, garlic bread, and a drink. Um, we hope that everybody comes out and joins us to help with our mission. You know, I feel strongly about this. Um, one out of seven children will go to bed hungry tonight in our county, and I just don't think that's acceptable. Um, every dollar you, pr you provide for, for the Atlanta Community Food Bank will provide four meals. So we can still keep giving until the end of April. So if you still like to make a donation, you can. Um, just write on your check, or um, if you give to give like, just put a hunger walk on there for us. Thank you guys. I appreciate everything you guys have done for us. Thank you, Leanne. One more quick announcement is that Family Promise registration is going to be next week. If you want to, you can see Valerie or Darcy to sign up for Family Promise. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Jennifer, for the presentation. I invite you to support her in the leadership. I know that it's a new beginning uh, for her. And thank you for the faith and the love and the community that to this part. I know that some decisions are not so easy to make, but God is guiding the way. Thank you. God of the cross. In losing our lives, we find them in you. In sharing our resources and time, we receive the blessings of your kingdom. Use these gifts toward your holy work of peace, justice, and service in the world.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord of God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We bless you and we bless you. Holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us into rivers and told us to walk in your ways. But we rebel against you and wander far away. And yet, as a mother who cares for her children, you would not forget us time and again you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings to eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. <laughs> And now, as our Savior Christ has told us, we are born to say.
Deliver us, we implore you, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and to come, that to the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all troubles. To the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Look at